call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the July 2nd, 2019 Post Falls City Council meeting. Clerk will note that all council members are present with the exception of Mr. Wolf, and I don't know if he's MIA or en route. So we'll see what happens as the night progresses. We have a few announcements tonight. We want to wish everyone a safe and sane 4th of July. Please remember that only fireworks marked safe and sane are legal to possess or use within the city of Post Falls. You can only use fireworks on your private property. It is unlawful to ignite any fireworks of any kind in public areas such as parks, streets, or parking lots. A, li a full list of illegal fireworks is on the city website and city Facebook page. And I always wonder how many rockets I'm going to be picking up out of my yard this year. <laughs> <laughs> the observance of uh, July 4th Independence Day, Post Falls City Hall and City Business Offices will be closed Thursday, July 4th. Police, fire, and rescue services for life-threatening or in-progress emergencies may be reached by calling 911. The police department will be open for walking emergencies. For water department emergencies, call 773-3517. And there will be no trash pickup on Thursday, July 4th. Following the holiday, trash pickup will fall one day late and return to normal pickup schedule on the following Monday. Post Falls Festival is Friday, July 12th through Sunday, July 14th. The parade on the 13th will be uh, Saturday the 13th and begin at 10 a.m. There will be food and craft booths, car show, big wheel race, run inflatables for the fun inflatables for the kids, weightlifting featuring our own Steve Anthony. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Steve, uh, it's a weightlifting competition. Sea uh, Rights, Ace Hardware, and, and America. Uh, credit Union movie night in the park, parade, live music, and beer garden. A, a schedule of events is on the city's website. This says Numeric, Numerica HQ. Is it Credit Union? That's what I understand. Okay, just wanted to make sure. The boat launch will be closed during the festival July 12th through 4th. And the annual K-9 golf tournament fundraiser will be Friday, July 19th at 9 a.m. And that is at the links. For sponsorships and questions, call, contact uh, Sergeant Frank uh, Bowen. Bowen. I always say that wrong. Bowen. I was, I was always thinking it was Brown. I said, there's no orders. S uh, Sergeant Frank Bowen, or visit the Post Falls Police K-9 Unit Facebook page. I talked with Chief, and he says a little bit slow in getting people to sign up. So please, uh, if you have any interest, sign up a team. Feel free to sponsor and just have a good turnout to help support our K-9, uh, the K-9 section of our police department and tonight we have a special guest we want to introduce and ask her to come forward and introduce herself to us the 2019 mrs idaho america heidi pool heidi hi hi my name is heidi pool i am the newly crowned queen of idaho so this is a really great honor for me this was my first time ever doing a pageant of any sort. So this is this is brand new, but women from all over the state of Idaho come together, you get your local title. So I was Mrs. Lake Coeur d'Alene, and then we all, yeah, compete to become Mrs. Idaho. So that I won, and my next step now, because I represent all married women for the state of Idaho, I now get to go on to compete for Mrs. America. So it's actually held this year in August in Las Vegas. So I get to compete with all other 50 states. So we're all coming together to do that. But um, I'm just trying to raise awareness for the other women out there who don't know about this. Cause like me, I had no idea this even existed. I just had told my husband that I felt like I needed to do something more. I wanted to be more involved in my community. I just wanted to help out. I mean, I have two little boys and I work for our business and I just said, okay, I don't know. There's this, this just isn't cutting it for me. So just, a, <laughs> It's a really great opportunity. Uh, you meet lots of amazing women and it does get you more involved within the community. So I just wanted to introduce myself and, and meet all of you. So thank you for having me. Well, thank you for taking the time to come and introduce yourself. Congratulations on your victory. 
and they probably could have picked a better time to have a pageant in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be steaming, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, can I say something absolutely. to Ms. Heidi? Oh, absolutely. As a married Idaho woman, yes. Mm -hmm. I can't think, yeah. You're fabulous. Thanks for representing. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you only have to be 18 years or older, legally married in the state of Idaho, and of good moral character. So those and, are your yeah. true only obligations. And then it's comprised of three elements. So 50% being your interview. So you actually do have to meet with five separate judges, and they can ask you anything and everything they want. So that's probably the most nerve-wracking and actually worth 50% of your score, which for me I think is a little bit better because it's not just about your – your appearance, you know, I think it's more, you know, like they actually want to know who you are. And then 25 is swimsuit, and then 25% is your evening gown. So how poised and elegant you are on stage, so. Well, I could be fabulous in the interview. We have an interview every couple, four years. It's called an election. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might need to meet up and take some notes, that's for sure. I think we need council sashes, though, with rhinestones. <laughs> Thank but you they very much. Idea. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are there any uh, amendments to the agenda tonight? We have none tonight, sir. Are there, and are there any declarations of conflict? Linda. Um, I'll recuse myself from number E in the consent calendar, the Wildflower Meadows Master Development Agreement uh, for a, a, peer, a possible appearance of a conflict of interest. Thank you. And this is going to be a lengthy reading. So we discuss whether or not we take a break in the middle of it, but we're not going to. So, so Shelley, would you please uh, present the consent calendar? Item A is minutes from the June 18th, 2019 City Council meeting. Item B is payables June 11th through June 24th, 2019. Item C is additional engineering services agreement with TO engineers for the water system improvement project. Item D is Gabriel Estates master development agreement. Item E is Wildflower Meadows Master Development Agreement. Item F is easements and rights of way dedication from 41 and Mullen Investments for 12th Avenue Lift Station Project. Item G is contract for landscape concrete work with BCR Land Services for Black Bay Depot. Item H is contract for landscape earthwork with BCR Land Services for Black Bay Depot. Item I is revised memorandum of understanding with Post Falls Urban Renewal Agency for Highway 41 Sewer Line Project. Item J is revised memorandum of understanding with Post Falls Urban Renal Agency for 12th Avenue Lift Station. Item K is wastewater capacity replacement fee agreement 302 North Spokane Street. Item L is wastewater capacity replacement fee agreement 3622 East Mullen Avenue. Item M is Montrose 11th edition subdivision plat application. Item N is Reben Lots subdivision plat application. Item O is Jacobs Run Subdivision Plat Application. Item P is City Center Downtown Urban Renal District Legal Description. Item Q is Purchasing Beck Park Splash Pad Equipment from Northwest Playground Equipment. Item R is Contract for Playground Safety Surfacing Tiles with Northwest Playground Equipment for Black Bay Depot. Item S is Contract with Synthetic Turf Field Installation with Coast to Coast Turf for Black Bay Depot. Item T is contract with METS Group for staffing <coughs> analysis. And item U is addendum number one to 16th Avenue, Velcelio II annexation agreement. And I have, uh, okay. I have a question, and I spoke with Warren briefly about it. Uh, Warren, uh, item P, the City Center Downtown Urban Renewal District legal description. We had someone ask a question uh, what that entails. Could you please explain that? So the the item on the consent calendar for tonight is to hire a surveyor to actually create the legal description once it's arrived at. That way we have uh, folks lined up ready to do that once we have something to tell them to go draw. So it's essentially just setting up the, the process so that when, we, when the council finally approves what that boundary looks like, we have folks in place to get it done. Okay. Yeah. And Urban Renal will be looking at that boundary on July 9th at their 8 a.m. meeting, and then it will come to council for July 16th. Okay. Good. Thank you. Steve. Okay. i got a, a few questions for Dave. Dave, I notice we have quite a few items on the Black Bay Depot. Mm -hmm. Coming on that, is there a projection on when that will be open to the public? I have told staff that our deadline is for January 1. Okay, this year. 
in a, the one thought too, is there any thought of in the future a crosswalk or something between Black Bay Depot and the Black Bay Park? We've, we've talked about how that uh, connectivity could be done and part of that is that master plan for Black Bay. Okay. Kind of making sure that the pathways and trails all line up. I think in their phase four they actually show a bridge um, lining up with it. Okay. Because I can see once that's developed in Black Bay, I can see a lot of traffic and kids going back and forth to both, both multi-use. And so I think whether it's a lit crosswalk like they have between the hospital and uh, the uh, 700 building on Ironwood, that there's going to have to be something for the kids because there's going to be a lot of traffic, I think. I think it's going to be very successful with that comes kids and traffic. Okay. So, okay, thanks. Yeah. Anyone else? Joe. Question on item T, uh, the METS group staffing analysis. First question is, was this competitively bid? Teresa Benner, HR director. Um, no, it was not. This was a, 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 a lib the METS group is somebody that uh, the community development department has used in the past. Um, she comes up, she has the capabilities to do some analytics that, that we felt were necessary to come up with the information we needed for our staffing analysis. And what kind of range, um, is this gonna be a 10 year look into the future, 20 year look into the future? How? This, is, this is designed to assist us going, moving forward to build a foundation for the next 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. And is, is this gonna build a kind of foundation that uh, you and your your staff can can use the same kind of metrics going forward. So five years from now, we can do this again on our own rather than that is the plan. Okay, I like that idea better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? That would entertain a motion. I would move for approval of the consent calendar as presented. Second. Okay. Motion second. Further discussion. Roll call, please. Malloy. Aye. Orders. Aye. Orson. Aye. Anthony? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Next up on the agenda is public hearings. Tonight we do have one. It's the uh, fiscal year 2020 fees. With that, I will open the public hearing. But I will, before you start, Jason, if anyone wishes to testify on this, there's forms on the back. Uh, Diaz, please bring them forward to Shannon. <coughs> All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is our regular fee hearing that we have every year before the fiscal year budget is adopted. That'll be coming forward at future council meetings. <clears throat> but um, these are just every fee that the city has, it was in the council packet, and I tried to identify whatever change was highlighted in yellow and had arrows pointed so you could see. It's a large document, but at least you could see what was changed. I'm just going to give a recap on the the items. These are just the standard rate increases we have every year. Uh, water pr proposal for 3%. Wastewater, the uh, the rate proposal was 7%. Uh, the last budget workshop we had, uh, John Beecham had brought a proposal of the uh, mm -hmm. wastewater doing their own inspect lo line locates. So we had a pr uh, proposal of increase instead of 7% to 7.1% and the information was um, sent out on the Senate bill number uh, 1073. <clears throat> With that additional, they're gonna hire an operator to pour, perform those. Uh, let's see, the next one is the reclaimed water cap fees. It's gonna increase 4.83%. Water, water cap fees is going to increase 4.7% based on the, both of those are done based on the new allocations that were handed down by the court. Uh, the impact fees are going to increase 2.34% um, based on an ENR index, which is the engineering news record. And at future dates, once the impact fee studies are done, they'll bring the, uh, bring the fee resolution back to be adopted once we get those studies done. But in the meantime, we're going to adjust, adjust the current rates by the ENR. And this is going to be the third year there will be no sanitation rate increases. For the um, for the citizens, <clears throat> per the contract we have a san post fall sanitation, they do receive a, a, a service increase on their contract, but we have enough in the um, the sanitation fund to cover that, so the, the citizens won't have an increase. But they'll, since they're getting increases on water and wastewater, I didn't want to have to, I want to use that fund balance in there to, to draw some of that down. 
And again, I go through the, the calculation of what does that look like on your utility bill. If you go through for, sanit for um, fiscal year 2019, the, if the homeowner uses five units of water on their utility bill, which is 5,000 gallons, their total bill would be $81.14. <clears throat> Compared with the new rates I'm proposing for fiscal year 2020, the new bill will be $85.45 and the difference is $4.31 when you compare the bill from 8, 19 to 20. And this is the, um, the hearing, so that I'll bring a, the actual fee resolution if um, directed by council to bring it back to the next council meeting. Are there any questions? Any questions, Linda? I just um, would like to have you tell the public that um, most of those fees and the way that they rise is because of our master plans. Is yeah, that correct? That is correct. We have a capital facility, a capital plan for both water and wastewater based on what the reserve is going to be, what operating costs are going to be, and any capital projects for both water and wastewater. <clears throat> the water one has been fairly stable to 3% increase, but as everybody knows, the wastewater increases have occurred, I believe it was I started here in 2013, 20, it was right around then we started having 14 percent increases, 14 percent increases again the following year. The increases have decreased, but there's still increased, there's still increases based on the wastewater capital plan and all of the construction um, going on at the wastewater plant. Yeah. And just one more thing, I would just like to um, thank you and John both for um, putting the Senate Bill 1073 and attaching it. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. John made it really easy. He sent that, sent that out, and I was going to go through and, and let everybody know where it was at. He had also went through and highlighted the section, yeah. so he, he made it really easy for me. Yeah. Thank you. The unfunded mandate? Yeah, it is an unfunded mandate, yes, sir. It's, it's difficult to adhere to. <clears throat> you can adhere to your master plan, but when you get an unfunded mandate, uh, you've got to do something. So, I, again, I would agree with Councilor Well, and that's appreciate the information provided. Absolutely. Very good. Curious. I was just going to mention on the capital expenses yes. to expand on what Linda was saying. Uh, that is because of federal regulations going back to 1414. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. So we're not just expanding because we can? No, there's there's certain um, restrictions on what the city, what, what the um, certain item, particular particulates that can be in the water that's discharged in the Spokane River. Right. Um, and so we need to get the wastewater treatment plant up to standard, and that is why the rates are increasing, yes. Keep the mayor out of jail. The mm -hmm. mayor that does go to prison if it doesn't, <laughs> if you don't comply, so there we go. Well, I, I think it's interesting, too, looking through it, that um, it's the public should know that there was real no proposed increases in the general fund for fees. All those right. stayed the same. So yeah, a lot of the uh, the majority of the fees that parks and recs have, the, the fees have stayed the same. But yes, the only, the ones that have increased are the utilities. Yeah, yeah. Just out of curiosity, do we know what? Uh, I should know this, but what's the projected uh, wastewater increase next year? Um, I think it's also going to be seven percent. I can remember how many years it was seven. Yeah. So so it started in. Um, 2014 as Jason stated and so for 10 years I know we had increases and then I, it drops down to just the like inflation rate okay. yeah hopefully we get a lot of these projects done in the interim <laughs> and I'll mention also Jason I looked at staffing because that's always a question with all the rate increases how much staff are you adding we've only added since those rate increases started in 2013 one wastewater operator in that time we also added a construction manager for the major construction we're having to do out there to meet regulations so that position was added but wastewater worker actually boots on the ground we've only added one person, one person in that yeah. time frame but we're pumping in another hundred thousand gallons of treatment through the plant per year since 2013 so okay. that's true any other questions any other questions thanks Jason right, thank any wish to testify thank you Mr. Flowers, opposition. Bob, please come forward. <clears throat> Bob Flowers, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. This is your water system master plan. If you want something that will put you to sleep at <laughs> night, try reading every page, every paragraph, every line of this and understand it. I have gone through this again and again, and I believe that a master plan is supposed to lead up to a certain point. 
In other words, if you believe you're going to supply water and sewage to X amount of people in 10 years, then each year you need to follow up to make sure that at that 10 year point, you uh, reach your goal. Well, after reading this and getting as much advice as I could, I think some of these numbers are skewed. I honestly do not believe that we need to raise the rates every year the way we do just automatically. We say, why are we raising the rates? Because it's in the master plan. Well, how many of you folks can actually say that you've sat down and read the whole master plan? Because I'll bet you there's not too many. And those numbers do not justify, the end number does not justify the, the raises that we're seeing each and every year. Yes, we've seen some great increases in our wastewater and our water. They're, I'm basically at this point as private citizen paying double what I was in 2014. You're making it so the average person, especially the folks on a fixed income, they ain't going to make it much longer because you're talking about fees. That's not even talking about all the extra taxes that are going to go up because all of our assessments, as every one of you knows, has gone through the roof this year. I just, I think you should really look at these numbers and see if you really need these fees. We're not talking about a lot of money, but right now, Every dollar makes a difference. And that's all I'm asking is that you really look and see if you really need the money. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No rebuttal. Jason Faulkner, finance director. The only thing I wanted to say was the fees and the taxes are a little different. The fees are for a cost of service, and what happens is the 3% is based on what the water department has decided they want to do for capital replacements, where they want to have main, repla main replacements. There's certain projects they have along the years. Also, the 3% would also cover any rate increases with Avista, any increases with uh, Kootenai Electric, any type of those increases are passed on to the utilities as well. <coughs> and also goes with staffing. Staffing is also, we have medical increases that go up for staff that, that provide the service and also their um, uh, and wages as well. So each year those have exceeded the 3%, but, and also we have to have some type of um, uh, by our own policy to have certain funds set aside, 15% of what our budget is in case we do have a large main break or something happens to the water system, we have the money on hand in order to make those replacements with going out for bonds, which would cost the, cost the customers a lot more than 3%. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That close the public hearing, and I'll just make a quick comment. Mr. Flowers, you know, I appreciate your comments, but also understand these numbers aren't come up, uh, aren't developed in a vacuum. They bring in people that are expert in that area, and they look at where we are, where we need to be, the increase in regulation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, yeah, we can read it, and we're probably going to be a lot like you saying, wow, it put us to sleep. But when you get the right people involved, and when we vet the consultants who provide this information to us, we've got an excellent staff at the wastewater plant, and you mesh that experience and knowledge together, and that's where these numbers come from. And I, I agree, they're, they're going up. But we're also in the middle of about a uh, 30, a 40 million dollar project out at the plant right now. It's yeah. around, and actually we have an update I believe tonight, but around, yeah, 42 million to so 43 million. So 12 and a half, 13, 14 million a year and a half ago, 40 some million this year. And of course, any, any of these improvements, there's maintenance, there's, the expenses go up. So I appreciate your comments, but I do want you to know that this <coughs> information isn't developed in a vacuum. It's, we get the people to come forward and add their expertise and, uh, knowledge to help us develop them. Any other council comments? Mr. Mayor, I'll just add also um, the, I understand what Bob is saying and you have this um, report that tells you what to do for the next 10 years that you should check back in with that and see if you are meeting those goals and you are where you're supposed to be. And the report that John Beecham 
our public works director brought to you when we kicked off this $42 million project did exactly that, showing you where we were with our fund balances, where we are with our cost of maintenance and the cost of the projects. And so we do do that, and it does come back to the council. Okay. Thank you. No co further comments. I'd entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the fiscal year 2020 fees. <coughs> second. Motion second. Further discussion. Roll call, please. Borders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next up is unfinished business. Tonight we have none. Followed by citizens' issues, and this section of the agenda is reserved for citizens wishing to address the council uh, regarding a city-related issue that is not on the agenda. Come forward and give your name, please. Chief. Evening, Mayor and Council Warren Merritt with Kootenai Fire. I just wanted to just emphasize uh, the 4th of July this week. It's going to be dry, hot, and people use fireworks. Um, nationally, about 12,800 people a year are injured, and, there's, and last year there were eight fatalities. So we can't stress the importance of using them um, safely and certainly emphasizing attending the public venues that are out there that are, that are run by the, pyrotech, uh, the pyrotechnicians. So that's a great way to enjoy a holiday and stay safe at the same time. Also this week, uh, we have uh, changing conditions, so we're going to be moving the burning regulations. It's going to go from moderate to high, and so tomorrow you're going to see a restriction on burning. <coughs> Uh, we'll no longer, uh, through IDL, the, uh, the Idaho Department of Lands, be issuing burn permits online effective tomorrow. Those that already have a burn permit will be able to finish out the 10 days. Uh, campfires and recreation are, in recreational areas will still be allowed. So um, we have expect that it's going to continue to get drier. We keep knocking on wood every day. Uh, we had a fire here the other day up on the prairie um, that was contained fairly quickly, but uh, it still got a number of acres uh, before it was under control. So we're emphasizing to the public to have a safe and sane fourth, as you say, and, and use them as they're designed. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Mm -hmm. While we have the Chief up here, yes, I wanted to compliment you. We received a copy of your report and uh, read through it, and congratulations to you and your staff. and. You had a busy year last year. <clears throat> it, it was a very busy year. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you for sending that. It's, uh, it's a lot that you don't realize what you do until you take the time to read it and look through it. So congratulations Thanks very much. on a good year. Thank you, and I'll pass it on to the staff there to be complimented for the work that they do every day. Mm -hmm. Chief, And uh, not to mention the um, charity work that yeah. all of you do, too. So oh. thank you for that, Chief. Great. Yeah. So in the uh, Association of Idaho City Board meeting, uh, Actually, during the legislative, legislative session, there was discussion on outlying fireworks in Idaho. And it was really very interesting to me that probably six of the 30-some people sitting around the table say, well, we think it's a good idea, but we're the biggest violators of that. It wasn't me. <laughs> but it's one, not me either. No, one, may, one mayor from down south said he was responsible for going over to the reservation and picking up all the illegal fireworks to bring back to his town. <laughs> oh, so I don't know if we'll ever get legislation on that. That's a tough issue, but I know that uh, down south they have a, a, an ongoing issue of, of the use of the illegal fireworks off, off the reservation, and, and those have, in fact, resulted in significant fires. Um, so there are vendors that could p potentially be held accountable for that illegal use. Yeah, yeah. That's a scary thing. It is. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Anyone else? Bob. Uh, flowers uh, on that same note why doesn't the city of Post Falls have a fireworks show anymore I mean we used to have a really nice show here down there on the river and we have enough folks that I think we could actually take in enough contributions to actually put on a show but we don't do it anymore we send all the people in Post Falls that want to see fireworks, you got to go fight the, the mess in Coeur d'Alene, or you got to go down to the reservation or somewhere else. Why not keep them here in Post Falls? I mean, we have the area. We could do it. But why don't we anymore? Mr. Fair, you'll take that under advisement? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I could answer. I, was gonna say, I think I kind of know that, too. Please. Thanks, Bob. Mm -hmm. So the last time we did the 
um, fireworks. I believe it was the Hairborn Band was here, might have been the year after. Uh, we did it for about two years, and it was done by the community volunteers. They were spearheaded it. Um, we were able to do it because Joe Dollafield with the State Line Speedway had an agreement uh, with a pyrotechnic company that was storing the, the fireworks there at his speedway. So we got a cut rate on it, but all that money had to be fundraised, and um, the volunteers just found that they could not raise enough funds to do it. It's very expensive, so it came down to the financing of it. I don't know if there's another group out there that would want to do it, but I do know that the window in there was very tight with um, what they could set off, how high it could go up. The winds were controlling it, so there's a lot of unknown, but for the community volunteers, it just became a point where they could not raise the money to do it. Yeah. So, Ron, I recall also another component of that because when you talk about Coeur Lane and you picture all the people that go there, think of all of the avenues, literally and figuratively, that you have to leave or come into Coeur Lane. When that was down there, you know, the expense of the fireworks, I believe, and somebody from law enforcement could uh, perhaps recall this too, with it being putting people onto Riverview, east and west, or across a single bridge with the crowds that it drew, the traffic, Camelon Park just for an event, and, and we'll see with the lantern, the water lantern, we'll see how that works. But I, I remember at the time that traffic mitigation for a really large event like that um, was an issue where it's a concentrated amount of time. It's not one thing, with, if you're having the festival and it's over a weekend, but this a concentrated time. So I might say if you want to stay in Post Falls, you go to State Line Speedway, who puts on a fireworks display, I think all three nights, third, fourth, and fifth. But for Mr. Flowers, I will, I will suggest to the community volunteers that they, they look into it again, but their private group, we'll see. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> out on the prairie. Next item up is new business, and tonight we have none, followed by ordinances and resolutions, and Again, we have none. So we do have an administrative staff report. Water reclamation facility, tertiary treatment, 60% design cost update. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. Craig Bornpole, Utilities Manager, uh, with a timely update <coughs> for some of the topics today. Um, I am... Pinch hitting for John. He had prepared this presentation, but uh, I believe does have an excused absence. So uh, you'll be hearing from me this evening instead. Yeah, of, instead interrupt of real John. quick. Did they have the baby? Not yet. So I didn't win. You you have July fourth also. Oh good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the important stuff. Huh? The important no, stuff. No uh, so I'm here to speak with you tonight uh, and give you an um, update on our tertiary treatment upgrade, 60% uh, design and cost update. Uh, so 60% is we're really starting to get <clears throat> into the nuts and bolts of what that final design will look like. Uh, so it's a good time to, uh, to present you uh, with kind of where we are midstream on our design. So an overview, uh, I'll give you a little project background. It's a topic that has been discussed many times. Um, but if you have questions on those slides, certainly ask. We'll get to where we are with the 60% design, uh, a recommended path forward, and an opportunity for discussion on the, uh, on the tertiary design. So project elements, uh, as discussed already tonight, um, this has come from the 2013 uh, facility master plan for the treatment system. Um, and we looked at uh, what we would need to install to meet uh, anticipated future discharge limits and the recommendation was tertiary membrane treatment. Um, so there was uh, some initial planning that went into that. Um, other recommendations were to upgrade our existing secondary system. That will reduce the load on, on that membrane treatment system and really extend the life of that if, if we're able to give it uh, a consistent quality of water uh, going to it. And finally, upgrading the uh, UV disinfection system to meet reclaimed water standards. That'll provide us the opportunity to um, go to wastewater reuse eventually, and we'll replace the, the aging UV system that we currently have that's kind of a, a maintenance headache for us. So project goals for the tertiary treatment uh, upgrade are to satisfy NPDES permit compliance schedule, 
our 2014 permit does have a compliance schedule that includes these benchmarks of design and construction <coughs> of this uh, upgrade. Um, also anticipate uh, increased capacity needs. Um, I think as Shelley mentioned, we're seeing about 100,000 gallons per year additional flow each year. That's been consistent over the uh, previous five years. We anticipate that to continue. Um, maximize our long-term return on investment for the project uh, and avoid duplicate future upgrades. Uh, a lot of times, once you get a contractor out there, you kind of want to take a big chunk of stuff and, and get it all done so you don't have to ask them to come back in two years. Uh, <clears throat> timeline, uh, we have awarded a design contract for the upgrade. Uh, they produced a 10% design memo, which kind of was a, a very basic layout. Um, we looked at the systems that we wanted to procure and actually um, uh, awarded contracts to suppliers for those. So that could be incorporated in the design uh, along the way. You were presented with a 30% update and PER, and we are now, as I talked about, moving to the 60% design phase and really starting to see what things are going to look like when we get to, get to construction. Um, from the 30%, the uh, costs were higher than projected in 2013. Um, funds are available to build the project, uh, but um, we wanted to look at opportunities to save uh, along the way through design. Um, and uh, also with the understanding that postponing some of the project elements introduces new risks, uh, saving on, on improving the secondary treatment system, like I said, may pose a risk to, to the tertiary system that we are, are uh, designing. Um, recommendations were to continue to 60%. Uh, like I said, look for cost savings and report um, at this 60% with updated costs. Um, we want to retain an option uh, if we do see cost escalating to bid that secondary treatment um, as an ad alternate in case we get good bid prices or uh, we see the other components uh, really above what we expected. Um, so a cost savings analysis has been done between 30% and 60%. Um, we've identified some savings in, in that process, but we've also offset some of those in other areas with additional expense. Um, some examples are we've moved our chemical storage outside that saves on quite a few components, um, but we have moved the, uh, the plate settlers um, indoors, and that was uh, mostly a, a, a safety and operational decision that was made. The plate settlers, we've learned, are, are sprayed down weekly, if not daily, and we envision doing that during the winter, and our operators out there spraying down could get very dangerous. and so. Um, it, it seemed to make sense to, to move those inside. Um, <clears throat> a medium example, we identified some less expensive pumps, uh, but that cost savings was offset <coughs> by uh, stainless steel clarifier weirs. The uh, engineer came back to us and let us know that the originally proposed aluminum, uh, they'd seen problems in other installations and they were going in and having to replace it uh, in the five year window when we're really hoping to get a lot more lifespan out of it. So the decision was made on a life cycle cost to, uh, to go to stainless steel there. Um, and then a small example, uh, cost savings by eliminating a, a jib crane. Uh, we have equipment uh, on site now that can handle that task, so we could remove that, that design element. Um, so uh, we've talked earlier tonight about fees and, and what are those paying for? And, and here's, here's our number where it stands. Uh, $43,862,500. Um, at 30%, the engineer had a pretty broad range of, of contingency. We've narrowed that down a little bit as we start to get uh, a closer look and really know what, what things are, but we have seen uh, those costs go up. Uh, recommended path forward is to continue to final design um, with all project elements. Um, bid the project and continue to, to look at cost savings along the way. See if uh, life cycle cost, um, when we start to pick building materials between metals or uh, CMU block, uh, really be, be uh, putting, putting, sharpening our pencils at that point. Um, again, we want to retain option to bid secondary elements um, as add alternates just in case uh, we get unfriendly bids. Um, and the next time you'd expect to see us is when we get to that final design and we get the final engineer's opinion of, of probable cost, cost, what we're hoping to, to see on bid day when we open bids. Um, 
we intend to come report to you what that final estimate is. A um, little difficult to see, but this is, this is kind of a, a layout. Like I said, we're starting to see a little bit more where things are going to be. I don't know if, if you recall being on tours, um, but our real big oxidation ditches, uh, this, this is the area that is taken up there. So we're, we're adding quite a few components and really utilizing more of the site. Um, it's going to look drastically different. The, uh, the old animal shelter is right here to give you a, kind of a frame of reference. And as we get into design, we're really looking at things like, you know, chemical storage here. Can we get the trucks in for deliveries and, and back out? Um, some of those things that, you know, as we play the, the Plinko game, um, it's, it's starting to see it come together a little bit more, which is exciting. Um, zooming in on, on one of those areas, this is the, uh, the membrane building um, and where this used to be, you know, just sort of laid out racks. Uh, the design plans have gone to structural and they start to tell us, you know, where we need to put support columns. Um, do we need to adjust? Uh, do we have room for um, control building? Can we see out to what's going on in case there's an issue? Uh, so that's, that's some of the changes that you may have seen from 30% to now this 60%. This and some of those costs um, are factored into that, that structural. Believe it or not, when a structural engineer comes back and says this concrete wall uh, here needs to be 24 inches thick. Uh, that's much more expensive to build than when it was assumed maybe 18 inches thick. Um, so getting it into their hands reduces that, that variability a little bit, but uh, that's, that's kind of what we're, we're seeing, where we are at 60%. When do you anticipate, Craig, uh, coming back with the final opinion value? Uh, this fall. Yeah. Yep. Um, Design will, will accelerate quickly. Uh, we are hoping to award this year. Um, so between 60% and 90%, <clears throat> um, yeah, it, uh, it'll be this fall. Okay. Any other questions for Craig? It's a big project. Thanks for uh, pinch hitting, making it something that we can understand. I appreciate that. We've had presentations years ago where I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> Uh, next up is mayor comments. I'd just like to <coughs> remind folks that uh, I believe it's this Monday, the infrastructure tour, this coming yes. Monday. Yes. Uh, you can meet in front of City Hall at 3 p.m. to catch a bus. Uh, <coughs> you're going to go by Falls Park, East 3rd Avenue, uh, the lift station, et cetera, Black Bay, sk the skate park, uh, the police department, uh, Tullamore, Crown Point, Montrose. And I think I might be, that's it. But a lot of things to see. We're going to see different uh, parts of the city's infrastructure. So again, three o'clock, front of City Hall. If people want to join us. Public is invited, as I recall. If there's room on the For bus, sure. otherwise they can follow. Follow. Okay. And echo what Chief said. Please be safe this Fourth of July. Let's not have any fires. Let's not have any drownings. Hopefully everybody can enjoy and, and celebrate and be no worse for the wear on the fifth. How about council comments? one um, other than happy fourth of July uh, Post Falls Lions we talked about the haunted house a couple weeks ago that they're no longer doing on fourth Avenue well Saturday and Sunday from 8 to 1 they're selling everything so come and make them an offer barnwood um, a pole building costumes <laughs> tools everything so they are totally liquidating even the concession stand that has appliances and things in it um, and all of that money that all of the revenue from everything that they sell stays right here in the community and so it's a win-win but yeah they just announced that that 8 to 1 p.m. Saturday and Sunday at the haunted house come and bring money and take stuff home with you thank you Anyone else huh and I believe isn't it uh, next Tuesday the first uh, live after five at Tullamore Park Thursday. Thursday, I mean the first Thursday, yeah. Next Thursday will be the first one. So I think you have the Kelly Hughes band playing, so it should be a good crowd. So I'd like to invite everybody out and have a good time on a Thursday evening at Tullamore. We didn't mention that, that we've had that since our last council meeting. Yeah. That was a wonderful opening. 
at Tullamore. It, it was really nice. Had a lot of a chance to talk to people who lived around there. Gosh, you know, it's a beautiful park, but it was also nice to be able to hear from the citizens, whether they're the, the homeowners or people, uh, you know, who rented apartments. It, you had a real cross section of the community who came out to enjoy that park, and you just went, "Yeah, that's what that's what it's for." So, yeah, it was a win all the way around. Kudos, Dave, and everybody who made that happen. Persistence mm -hmm. took and a long Crown time, Point, but you got there. Crown Point will do theirs in August. Is that correct? Correct. So we'll have a grand opening for the Crown Point Park in August. Good. Thank you. Well, once again, congratulations, Mrs. Idaho, Mrs. Poole. Yeah. Best of luck. Yeah. And uh, we hope you don't melt down in August. But, uh, <laughs> we look forward to good results. And with that, the next motion is? Adjourn. All those in favor? All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.